What's e-commerce? E-commerce means selling things online. That's it. These can be things you make yourself, items like used books and movies, or commercial goods you buy wholesale. If you're buying or selling it from a website, it's e-commerce. E-commerce is now a big part of all retail sales and is only going to grow. If you have something to sell, even if you have a physical store, you really need to also sell it online. It's the easiest way to greatly expand your potential market. Platforms There are two main ways to sell your products online. Use an existing e-commerce platform or use your own e-commerce website. You're already familiar with these existing platforms. There are two main advantages to using these options. They take care of some of the work for you. This includes things such as credit card processing, taxes, and some of the shipping details. This doesn't apply to Craigslist, but don't get too excited about that. Although you can sell a few things there, they don't really allow for real e-commerce. The second advantage is that you get an instant market. As soon as you list your products on these sites, they're visible to millions of potential buyers. This is much wider exposure than you could reasonably expect to get for your own website. There are also some disadvantages to using these established e-commerce platforms. What you can sell is limited. Each platform has its own rules. If you make something, you can't sell it on Amazon. New and used commercial products only. Etsy is the opposite, handmade products only. You can sell both on eBay, but they're strongly favoring larger stores now. The fees can add up fast. While Craigslist has no fees because it's not a real e-commerce platform, the other services charge you for all kinds of things. For example, here are Etsy's fees. 20 cents to list an item. 5% of the item price plus the cost of the shipping. Card processing fee, about 3%. eBay charges you about 12% of the item's cost. This means that if you sell an item for $100, you actually get $88. A final problem with these platforms is that you are subject to their policies about everything. They can change their fees at any time or even decide to stop allowing sales of your products. If you also have a separate e-commerce website, they may prevent you from linking to it. Which system to use? Unlike the platforms mentioned earlier, there are companies that provide full service options for people who want their own e-commerce website. Here are some of the leading ones. The advantage to these options is that they take care of all of the technical stuff for you. These all work pretty much the same way. You pay a monthly fee. Shopify's basic plan is $29 a month and includes everything you need to get started, including card processing, which costs about 3%. You select a template for your store and customize it with your logo and colors. You upload your products, photos, descriptions, and prices. You select your shipping and payment options, and you're in business. You can also integrate these systems with your accounting system, mailing list, and other software. For people who don't want the work of building their own site from scratch or paying a developer to do it, these platforms are an ideal way to go. When someone asks me about an e-commerce site and they can't afford to have me build it, I recommend they use Shopify. You might see ads for building an online store using GoDaddy or Wix. Don't do it. These platforms offer one advantage. They're cheap, proving that you get what you pay for. A custom website. Although many people run successful e-commerce businesses on the platforms I just mentioned, there are some good reasons to consider having a custom e-commerce website. Pros. The first advantage is control. You decide what to sell. You set the prices. You decide how your site looks. You control the shipping. You set the policies. The fees you'll have to pay will be lower. You'll still have to charge for shipping and taxes, but the card processing fee will be about 3%, so that $100 sale will net you $97, $9 more than you'd get from eBay. Cons. There are also some drawbacks to doing things yourself. It takes a fair amount of work. You'll need to set up your products, decide on shipping options, and manage the store. You'll have a smaller initial market without the millions of people who shop on Amazon or eBay. It'll be up to you to promote your store, and you will probably have to spend some money to advertise. 
A well-made e-commerce website isn't cheap. There's a lot more involved than with a regular website. I see people advertising e-commerce sites for $99. That's insane. Any qualified developer will charge at least a few thousand dollars for this. My rate starts at $5,000. I've seen e-commerce websites built by developers who didn't even know that certain things are legally required, like a privacy policy. This leaves the client, you, open to legal liability. Before you go with a cheap developer, add in the cost of losing a lawsuit or two. Besides, if you're doing your taxes correctly, the cost of a website is a deductible business expense, so what are you complaining about? And if you aren't doing your taxes correctly, don't start a business. The tax man will find you. Having your own e-commerce site is usually better in the long run, and there's no reason not to do both. You can sell all of your products from your website and sell selected items on Amazon, Etsy, or eBay. This can help attract customers to your store, which is a better deal for you. Building a custom website. If you want total control over your online store, there's only one way to get it. Build your own site or pay a developer to do it. Unless you are really computer savvy and know a lot about marketing, don't try to do this yourself. Hire a professional. They will create a site to your exact specifications and make sure everything works correctly. They can also train you to manage the store, adding products, running sales, etc. There are several web technologies that can be used to build an online store, but the most popular is WordPress. WordPress has several important advantages. It powers about 40% of the world's websites, including the White House and the New York Times, so there is a huge support base available. Nearly every developer is familiar with it. This is important because your original developer may disappear. With WordPress, you'll have no trouble finding another developer to help you. It's highly customizable, so you can do almost anything with it. It easily integrates with accounting, shipping, and mailing list software to help automate your business. Shopping carts. The shopping cart is the heart of any e-commerce website. This is where you add products, sell them, manage shipping, and everything else connected with the store. Shopping cart software used to be clunky and hard to use, but it has greatly improved since the old days. If you're using a platform like Shopify or Squarespace, you'll be using their custom shopping cart, so there's no decision to make about it. If you're building a custom site, several shopping cart options are available. Some of these are Magento, PrestaShop, OpenCart, and ZenCart. If you're building your site in WordPress, there's a clear favorite, WooCommerce. It's the most widely used shopping cart on the internet, and it has several advantages. The basic software is open source, which means it's free and is being constantly improved by its large user base. It's extremely flexible. There are hundreds, probably thousands, of add-ons you can add to extend its functionality, including payment options, complex shipping setups, store display options, file downloads, and much more. If you want to do it with your online store, Woo can probably do it. It integrates with nearly every kind of accounting, shipping, and mailing list software. If you're working with a developer to build your site, chances are pretty good they're already familiar with WooCommerce. Payments. Accepting payments is the whole point of e-commerce. That's the commerce part. There are a lot of ways to get paid, and some make more sense than others. Here are the basics. Forget about cash and checks. Everybody knows that online shopping requires a credit or debit card. Since you have to accept cards, you'll have to pay a processing fee, usually around 3% of the total purchase price. Occasionally, a client will ask me if there's a way to avoid this fee. There isn't. There is simply no way around this, so don't bother looking for one. Like all of your costs, this fee should be considered when pricing your merchandise. If you're using a commercial e-commerce platform like Shopify, they probably have a payment method already set up. If they give you a choice, go with their default option. But if you're building a custom site, you need to decide how to handle this. There are a lot of card processing companies, but in the U.S. there are two main options, PayPal and Stripe. Here's a brief summary. PayPal. Everybody knows about PayPal, and that's good and bad. The good part is just that. PayPal's name recognition makes them trusted. When people see your checkout is handled by PayPal, they know their transaction is secure. 
As the merchant, you can connect your PayPal account to a bank account and transfer money between them. The bad thing about PayPal is the checkout experience can be confusing. To make their purchase, the customer goes to your checkout page and enters their information. When they click the Pay button, they are taken to PayPal where they see a page that looks like this. Here's the problem. It looks like you need a PayPal account to pay, but actually you don't. Here's the fine print at the bottom. Or pay with a credit card. A lot of people don't see that and assume they need a PayPal account to pay. If they don't have one, they get confused and leave, and you just lost a sale. You always want the checkout process to be as simple as possible. Every issue like this is one more reason for someone to bail out halfway through the process. There's even a fancy term for this, shopping cart abandonment, and it can cost you a lot. Because of that, I recommend using Stripe as your payment card processor. You set up a Stripe account, it's free, and connect it to a checking account. When someone gets to your checkout page, they enter their information, click pay, and that's it. It's a seamless process. It's what people are used to and expect. Stripe offers a superior customer experience for the same price as PayPal. It's a no-brainer. Here are a few payment tips. If you have a custom site, be sure to test the entire transaction process. Don't just assume it will work. There are a million ways it can go wrong, and if a customer can't complete their transaction, they won't contact you. They'll go somewhere else. Stripe has a testing mode that gives you fake card numbers to use. Make sure you use it. PayPal's test mode, on the other hand, is a nightmare. I've never been able to get it to work. If you're using WooCommerce, there's one more thing to do before your site goes live. First, make sure WooCommerce is in live mode, not test mode. Change the price of an item to a dollar, then use your card to buy the item. This forces the entire transaction process to work, including the card processing. Then just go into the store part of your site and delete this transaction, and you're good to go. Don't forget to change the item back to its correct price. Beware of scams such as someone wanting to pay you with gift cards. If someone contacts you and wants to pay you in a way other than a credit or debit card, be very careful. Your BS detector should light up. Taxes Taxes are everyone's least favorite topic, but ignoring it can, and will, cost you dearly. Luckily, they're pretty easy to handle. All shopping carts let you specify how to handle taxes. The first question is whether what you sell is taxable. All physical products generally are, but services may not be. Ask an accountant. The next question is where the taxes apply. In the U.S., you must charge sales tax for the state where your business is located. That means that any customer who lives in your state, or has their shipping address there, must pay the state sales tax. Ask an accountant. The good news is that your shopping cart software can do this automatically. When the customer enters their shipping address on the checkout page, the software will add the tax if they live in your state. And now the bad news. Most counties and some cities also have their own sales tax. This is usually less than 1%, but you have to collect it. Here's an example. I live in North Carolina. The state sales tax rate is 4.75%. There are 100 counties in the state. Each has its own sales tax, usually about 2%. This means that the sales tax in North Carolina varies between 4.75% and 7%. If you're using a platform like Shopify, it should calculate this for you. If you're using WooCommerce, you'll need to enter the rates, both for your state and for all of the cities and counties. Sound like fun? It isn't. Luckily, Woo now has a free add-on that does this for you. Make sure your web developer adds that. If you want to sell your products to people in other countries, things get complicated fast. Ask an accountant for help. Here's a quiz. What phrase have I been repeating? Ask an accountant. Hire an accountant. It's the best money you'll ever spend, and it just might keep you out of jail. They will help you connect your website to your accounting software and make sure you're doing everything by the IRS's book. They'll also explain to you how deductions work and the differences between your personal and business taxes. And they'll make sure you submit the state sales taxes you've collected on time. Some states have complex laws about what is and isn't taxable. Don't try to guess about this. A former client went to prison for two years because of taxes. Don't let that be you. Shipping 
Shipping is everyone's second least favorite topic, next only to taxes. I often talk to people who want to start an online store, and they're shocked to learn that they have to package the items and ship them. They thought this happened by magic. It doesn't. Shipping is the biggest single problem I have with e-commerce clients. It can be very confusing to understand. If you're using a platform like Shopify, they will automatically add a U.S. Postal Service shipping charge to each order, but you still have to package the orders and take them to the post office. This relieves you of the hard part of shipping, deciding what shipping method to use and how much to charge. If you're using WooCommerce or a platform that doesn't calculate shipping for you, you'll need to make two decisions, what shipping method to use and how much to charge for it. For shipping methods, you have two main choices, the U.S. Postal Service or carriers like FedEx and UPS. For my clients, I usually recommend the U.S. Postal Service. It's the easiest to set up and they offer several different options from next day to get there eventually. The Postal Service is easy because the prices are already set for each type of container and they'll give you the boxes for free. You can connect WooCommerce to FedEx or UPS, but it's a nightmare to get it to work correctly. UPS has about 50 shipping options to choose from, but the really hard part is getting it to calculate the price for the entire order, not each item separately. If you want to go this route, be prepared to spend some serious time getting things to work correctly. Fast or slow? Once you choose a shipping method, there's one more choice to make fast or slow. If you're using USPS, your main choices are next day, two to three day, and first class. I recommend offering two options, fast and expensive, and slow and cheap. Always offer next day delivery. No matter what you sell, there's always somebody who wants it tomorrow and is willing to pay for that. The USPS flat rate boxes or first class are good options for most of your customers. Pick one or the other, plus the next day option, and you're set. Your web developer can help you set this up. If you're offering a next day option, make sure you actually get the package to the post office before their next day deadline. If someone is paying $35 to get their package in one day, they won't be very happy if it arrives four days later. Add a message to your site explaining your shipping policies. There's one other scenario I need to mention. Let's say you sell candles. The Postal Service charges you $5 to ship one candle, so you decide on a shipping cost of $8. If someone buys two candles, it still costs you $5 to ship that, so you're good. But if they buy 10 candles, it costs you $20 to ship, so if you only charge $8, you lose $12 on the sale. It doesn't make sense to charge $8 for each of the 10, so what do you do? The answer is quantity-based shipping. This calculates the cost based on the number of items the customer buys. In our candle example, it might be $5 for one or two candles, $10 for three to five, $16 for six to nine, and $25 for 10 to 12. WooCommerce can be configured to do this, and some really complex shipping setups too. Packaging. You also need to package your items before you ship them. If you're using USPS flat rate boxes, that takes care of the box. You'll still need to get bubble wrap, those styrofoam peanuts, or something else to pack the item securely. If the postal boxes aren't suitable, you'll have to buy boxes too. I recommend Uline for shipping materials. They have everything you could possibly need and they sell in bulk. Your shipping materials are also a business deduction, so keep track of your purchases. When calculating your shipping costs, don't forget to factor in your time. How to determine what to charge. Once you've decided on your shipping options, you still have one more step, figuring out how much to charge customers for shipping. Here's how to do that. Figure out or take a guess what your typical customer will buy. If you sell both single items and bundles, several items grouped together, such as beauty products, use both for the following steps. Package the item or bundle as you would to ship it. Use the same packing materials and boxes. Take these boxes to the post office. Ask the clerk to tell you how much it would cost to ship them to the farthest point in the U.S. from you using whatever shipping methods you want to use. If you're using USPS flat rate boxes, the rate will be the same no matter the destination, which makes things a little easier. 
Once you have these prices, add a few dollars to cover the cost of the shipping materials and your time. Round up to the next dollar and you have your shipping charges. Don't overcharge. Remember that Amazon charges $4 to ship almost everything they sell. Keep in mind that shipping to Alaska or Hawaii can be considerably more expensive, so think about how you want to handle that. Free shipping. Depending on how much your shipping actually costs you, if you can offer free shipping, I strongly recommend it. Many people look for this when shopping online, and it can give you a big advantage over competitors. Of course, it isn't actually free. You include the shipping cost, or at least part of it, in the price of your products. You can also offer free shipping as an occasional promotion. I know someone who bought a circus tent, and the shipping was $3,000. Too bad it didn't include free shipping. Selling to the world. Unlike a physical store, people from anywhere in the world can buy from you, if you want them to. Why wouldn't you want that? Because it's a lot of extra work to set up. If you're using a system like Shopify, they take care of some of this, but you still have to do a lot. If you have a custom website, I recommend limiting international sales to Canada and Mexico. Just figuring out the shipping costs will be a lot of work. Do you really want to figure out how much it costs to ship to Malawi or Iceland? You'll also need to configure your site to accept local currencies. The credit card companies don't do this automatically. You can always add some text to your site like, Shoppers outside the U.S., please contact us for shipping information, and then you can decide what to do for each case. I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't sell to other countries. Just be prepared for extra work if you want to do it. It's not as easy as using your credit card when you go on vacation. Legal Stuff Many people are unaware of the legal requirements of operating an e-commerce website. This is true for both self-contained platforms like Shopify and custom websites. Here's a summary of the issues. Your website must include a privacy policy. This is fairly standard language that covers things like how you will protect and use customer information and other exciting topics. You can find websites that will generate this for you. You enter some information about your company and it creates the policy. This usually costs about $10 to $20, but that's a lot cheaper than a lawyer. You also need a policy about payment cards. Again, this is pretty standard language about how you protect customer card information. You can include this on the same page as the privacy policy. Don't forget to come up with a return policy. You can't just say no returns because you might accidentally send someone the wrong item. Try telling them they can't return it. Your return policy can be fairly strict, but you still need one. And don't sell user information. You might be tempted to do this to make a few bucks, but forget it. If you do this without disclosing it, you're in big legal trouble. Just don't do it. In the early days of e-commerce, people were reluctant to buy anything online because they didn't know if their transaction was secure. Security has gotten much better and now it's taken for granted. If you're using a commercial e-commerce platform, they'll take care of this for you. But if you have your own website, you're responsible for security. Relax. You don't have to be a geek. All you need to do is make sure your website has something called an SSL certificate. Without going into a lot of boring detail, what this does is encrypt the customer's information when they check out to protect it from hackers. Ask your web developer about this. Good hosting includes this for free. More about this later. It's a good idea to include a checkbox on your checkout page for the policies. This can say something like, I have read and agreed to the policies. On my website, the customer can't actually pay until they check this box. Even if they don't actually read your policies, by checking this box, they're legally responsible for their laziness. You've probably seen an alert on some sites about something called GDPR. This stands for General Data Protection Regulation, and it's required for websites in the European Union. If you sell your products or services in Europe, your site must comply with the GDPR regulations. If you only sell in the U.S., don't worry about it, but if you're the paranoid type, your developer can take care of it for you. Here are some do's and don'ts. Your checkout should be as few steps as possible. Make the checkout process as simple as possible. Don't ask for extra information. Your checkout form needs to collect the customer's name, address, phone, and email, and shipping options. That's it. I saw a checkout form that asked for the customer's birthday and social security number. Don't do that. 
If you want to ask people to sign up for your mailing list, add a checkbox for that. You don't automatically have permission to send them marketing emails just because they bought from you. You need to get specific permission for that. Don't force people to register. Most e-commerce setups let people create an account on the site. The next time they come to the site, they log in and the site already knows their information. Very few people actually do this. You can force people to create an account before they buy, but that's a really bad idea. Let people check out as guests. Take high quality photos of your products. Since people can't actually see and touch your products, the photos need to be really good. Hire a professional photographer who does product shots, or find a friend who's a photography buff. If you're going to do it yourself, get something called a photo tent. You can get one from Amazon for about 50 bucks. Don't try to have an online flea market. I've had people tell me they're a great idea for a website. They'll collect free things, such as clothing, books, and whatever else from people, and then sell it online. This is not a viable business idea. Sell that junk on Craigslist instead. Don't use cheap hosting. Hosting is renting space on a special computer called a server. It's where your site lives. Commercial platforms provide this for you, but if you have your own site, it's up to you. One of the biggest mistakes you can make with a custom website is using cheap hosting. Avoid cheap hosting providers like GoDaddy or any hosting that costs between $5 and $10 per month. High quality hosting is especially important for e-commerce sites. This will make your site fast and secure. Expect to pay about $30 to $40 per month. And yes, it's a deductible business expense. Now that you know the basics, you're ready to be the next Jeff Bezos, maybe. Good luck. If you need a professional, marketing-focused website that really works for you, but don't think you can afford one, Go right now to WebsiteInOneWeek.com 